Welcome back. In this video I would like us to discuss a few special cases of the inverse Laplace transform of a strictly proper rational functions. And let's start by focusing on strictly proper rational functions with multiple complex conjugate poles. These are uh, cases, for example, where we have a double pole. We will not be focusing on poles of uh, higher multiplicity. So take, for example, that the denominator involves terms of the form s plus a squared plus b squared and the whole of it squared. So minus a plus minus jb is a double pole. For example, you have this function 2s plus 3 divided by that denominator over there. This is a case that falls in this category. The partial fractions expansion, it is, well, it is exactly the same as we would do in the case of a multiple real pole. And we need certain identities here to tell what is the inverse Laplace transform of the second term that looks slightly more complicated. But the formulas here are not so important. What, uh, what I need to point out to mainly are the qualitative characteristics of, um, of those inverse Laplace transforms. So let's start by examining what happens when we have purely imaginary poles of multiplicity 2. You see here we have oscillations. Well, it is expected because we have an imaginary component which uh, leads to oscillations. But at the same time, you see now the time domain function, the inverse Laplace, grows unbounded. And as we change the imaginary part, see what happens. So first of all, the frequency changes, the frequency of the oscillation changes. It becomes a higher frequency with, with a higher imaginary part. So this checks out. Uh, this is something we observed previously as well. And secondly, we see that the rate of growth changes uh, too. So it grows uh, slower as we increase the imaginary component. Now, if we move to the left of the imaginary axis, if we have a negative real part, we see that, in fact, the time response, the, the time domain signal goes to zero. And again, of course, we have oscillations. And this is what happens if we push the poles farther away from the uh, imaginary axis so that they have a, a more negative real part. Of course, the oscillations attenuate faster. The second topic I would like us to cover is to look at the general form of the inverse Laplace transform of any strictly proper rational function. So let's try to put together everything that we examined so far, but from a different pr perspective. So let's suppose that our rational function f, f uppercase, has a pole z. z might be real, but in general it can be complex, a plus jb. The corresponding inverse Laplace transform is an exponential function. It is e to the z, the pole, times t, e to the z times t. So e to the a plus j b times t. But we know very well that using Euler's formula, this gives this can be written uh, like that with a with a cosine and a sine. So let me say that again. If we have a term of the form one over s minus z, then this gives rise to products of exponentials with uh, trigonometric functions. If we have now a pole of uh, multiplicity kappa, where kappa can be 1, 2, 3, whatever, then this yields this familiar partial fractions expansion. So a1 over s minus z plus a2 over s minus z square and, and so forth, on and so forth, up to a kappa over s minus z to kappa. And these are constant coefficients. These a1 to a kappa are constant. And using this familiar, again, inverse Laplace transform, we have that this produces terms of the form exponential times power. So t to the 
kappa minus 1 times the exponential of minus uh, z t. So we have that, uh, we have this inverse Laplace formula. Now, if f is a rational function with poles s1, s2, and so on, up to sn, which are complex numbers, and we have no zeros, so the numerator uh, is a polynomial of uh, degree zero, so it's just a number, then we can, we can apply this approach, and the inverse Laplace transform of such functions will have the general form of powers times exponential functions. So t to the sum power k minus 1 times an exponential function, but where the exponent can be a complex number. So this exponential is to be interpreted as a product of exponentials with trigonometric functions as we saw previously. And it is a complex valued function. Now you have some complex components there, a, i, k are complex numbers, these exponentials are complex, but overall, of course, this is a real valued function. We have just used complex numbers to write it in that convenient form. So this is the general form, this is what to expect if you have a rational transfer function and you're looking for the inverse Laplace transform. Now next, the next topic is what happens if we don't have strictly proper rational functions. If we just have proper ones where the numerator and the denominator have equal degrees. This is something we haven't examined so far. So take this function f of s where you have a certain numerator a0 plus a1s plus and so on up to a n times s to the power n. So we have a degree n, provided that a n is non, not, not equal to zero, and we have a denominator of the same degree. Then the question is, what is the partial fractions expansion of f? It is what it was before, only we have an additional constant term, a n over b n. So the highest order coefficients give rise to this constant term. So let's give an example take this f of s, which is a second order polynomial divided by another second order polynomial. We can see here that the poles of f are minus 5 and minus 1. You can easily solve the quadratic equation to do that. You can factorize 3s squared plus 18s plus 15 is equal to 3, s plus 5, s plus 1. And now be careful here, the partial fractions expansion is the constant term 51 over 3, 51 is the coefficient of the highest order term and 3 is the corresponding coefficient in the denominator, so this is 17 plus, uh, the rest is known from before, so the rest remains uh, as it was before, a1 over s plus 5 plus a2 over s plus 1, and this is the new partial fractions expansion we have, so the constant term is what makes the difference. So that's your PFE here, and if you uh, multiply both sides by the denominator, you can easily end up with an equality of polynomials, and you can compare the corresponding coefficients to find the values of a1 and a2. So you determine the coefficients exactly as we did before. The only thing that changes is the constant term. Uh, so f of s now has been written in uh, a partial fractions expansion like that, 17 minus uh, 325 divided by 3s plus 5 and so on and so forth. And now what is the inverse Laplace transform of 17? It is 17 times Dirac, 17 times delta. And this is our inverse Laplace transform, that's it. Last but not least, let's see what happens if we have a rational function, proper rational function, times 
an exponential. Take for example 1 over s plus 1 times exponential of minus 2 times t. Uh, this is something you already know, we um, discussed about it in the context of um, functions defined piecewise when we discussed how to determine the Laplace transform of functions defined piecewise where we use the Heaviside function. So recall from uh, that video lecture that the Laplace transform of a Heaviside function with parameter a times a function f at t minus a is given by an exponential times uh, function f which is the Laplace transform of f. Now we'll turn this topsy-turvy and we'll have that the inverse Laplace transform of the given function f uppercase so the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 1 times exponential is heaviside with parameter 2 multiplied by the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 1, whatever it is, but you substitute t with t minus 2. Instead of t, just write t minus 2. And this is your result. So thanks very much for watching and goodbye.